In July of 2017, President Trump announced that individuals suffering from gender dysphoria, otherwise known as transgenders, would be barred from military service with very limited exceptions, and this was later confirmed officially by Secretary of Defense James Mattis. Now, the party that desperately wants to keep guns out of the hands of the mentally ill is upset that the president is trying to keep guns out of the hands of the mentally ill. I'm confused. John Doyle in. Heck off, commie. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Men, excuse my language, I don't want to trigger anyone by using traditional standards of hospitality and gender identification. Welcome to Heck Off Kami. If you are new here, please subscribe to my channel down below. And if you've been here before, hello. I've missed you. Okay, so I want to piggyback off what I said in the intro before my little theme song played because I don't want that to be taken out of, con taken out of context. And uh, I want to elaborate on the argument that I was making because I think it's actually really important to consider when discussing this issue. And the first thing I want to say is that personally identifying as a gender that is anything other than your biological sex is a symptom of a mental disorder known as gender dysphoria, formerly known as gender identity disorder. This was first introduced into the DSM, which for those of you who don't know is basically a handbook of all mental disorders from the American Psychiatric Association. It stands for the diagnosis diagnostic and statistical manual of mental disorders and as of right now there are five editions in circulation the most recent of the five being released in 2013. The key is that in the fifth edition, the 2013 edition, what was formerly known as gender identity disorder was removed and replaced with what they now have in there, which is called uh, gender dysphoria. The difference between the two illnesses being that while gender identity disorder was characterized by the fundamental principle of an individual feeling as if they were a gender that did not match their biological sex, gender dysphoria removes all of that and it's just simply focused on the distress that transgender people face as a result of their gender identities. And it pretends that the fact that they don't identify with their biological sex is just totally normal. And this was done by the way because the DSM has always been politicized. This was done because people were lobbying the DSM because they didn't like that their identity was classified as a mental disorder because it was insulting to them. Should people with bipolar feel the same? Should we just not recognize mental disorders for what they are to preserve how people feel? This brings me to the other thing that I want to elaborate on for my intro, which is that people that only cite the fact that transgender people are suffering from mental disorders as a means to belittle them or torment them are just awful. I mean, you know, you know what I'm talking about, like the people that they go to rallies and they scream at trans people like, oh, you have mental disorders. <laughs> just just like, okay, yeah. You're just using that to insult them. Like you're just trying to hurt them. Are you really like concerned with transgenderism because you want to help people or are you, or are you just annoyed with them and you want to hurt them? Because I get it. Some of these activists are annoying as hell, but you don't have to bully them. You don't have to be indecent. And it really doesn't make your argument any better either. It's the same thing with the fat acceptance movement, which should be about the idea that, hey, we shouldn't promote unhealthy lifestyles because 300,000 preventable deaths occur each year from obesity. But then the immature guys just want to hop on the bandwagon and be like, oh, fat people are funny, like in the name of discourse. Like, stop. Like, you're not helping anybody. You really aren't. And uh, transgenderism is parallel because these people are suffering and normalizing this disorder and confusing children is only going to perpetuate their suffering. And I know what you're thinking. Two things. One. Gender's different from sex, and two, the only reason transgender people are suffering is because bigots won't accept them. Compelling ideas, really, and there's going to be a video very soon on why both of those ideas are not a reflection of reality, so stay tuned for that. But for now, we're just going to focus on why Trump is right to ban most of these people from military service. So... Firstly, you need to understand that Trump is not personally against gays or transgenders. The left just likes to include every rung of the victimization ladder in the list of people that Trump is against and is also trying to include in his modern holocaust because Trump equals Hitler. And this isn't true. Trump is actually the first president in American history to be pro-LGBT, which is a relief because I was really getting sick of the intolerance of President Obama. I believe that marriage is between a man and a woman. Trump has said that sustaining the funding of HIV and AIDS programs is one of his biggest priorities. He wants to preserve the executive order maintaining non-discrimination for LGBT individuals in federal contracting. He preserved a State Department job that was tasked with promoting LGBT rights globally at a time when gay men were being rounded up and executed. He even said that people could use whichever bathroom that they prefer to in Trump Tower. In fact, most of the criticisms of Trump regarding his status as an anti-LGBT are things like, Trump associates with people that have anti-LGBT records. Yeah, but he himself doesn't have one. You're your last president.
presidented. Your 2016 nominee does, but be thankful that now your president doesn't. And then they will, Trump doesn't want K-12 students to be able to use whichever bathroom they want. Maybe because 75 to 95 percent of those kids won't actually end up identifying as trans. You're just confusing them with your agenda. And also because then you'd be giving adolescent white men, you know, that group of people that you've convinced everyone are misogynistic rapists, free access into the women's bathrooms. That would be unwise. Oh, and then Trump didn't recognize LGBTQ Pride Month. Probably because he was too busy trying to stop the people that want to kill you from coming into this country. If you think white Christians are intolerant because they won't bake you a cake, just wait until the Ugandans, whom he's led in by the thousands every year, make their way up to San Francisco. If there is a gay, you judge him based on the law of the land. And if the law of the land says he should be killed, leave that one to the law enforcement agent. Because the left likes to view the world as subsets of people competing for power over each other instead of just individuals possessing varying levels of competence, when President Trump announces that transgenders will not be allowed to serve in the military anymore, it cannot be because of any other reason except that Trump hates trans people. On average, a member of the United States military is two and a half times more likely to die than a healthy U.S. citizen. Of course, there are factors such as rank and branch that will decide the individual probability of this, but if Trump really wanted to kill as many trans people as possible, like you claim, it seems that he would prefer to not only allow, but encourage trans service in the military. And to that you might say, well, trans people are more likely to be killed than a, an average U.S. citizen, and that isn't true. Trans people are actually less likely to be the victims of homicide than cisgender, formerly known as normal, people are. And the misleading part about that claim that they are more likely to be killed is that it assumes that they are being murdered, when in fact it's because they are much more likely to commit or at least attempt suicide. And of course the left will say that that's only because we as a society treat them so badly and Trump is only making it worse by not letting them serve in the military. But this also isn't true. And I'll get into that more in the video that I mentioned that I'll be doing earlier, but just take a look at this statistic really quick. The percentage of transgender people that felt that being transgender has had no negative impact on their quality of life, and this is from the Williams Institute at UCLA, that still attempted suicide was 31%, 31%, almost one in three. Based on the 2016 survey of national drug use and mental health, the percentage of the US population that's made at least one suicide attempt, 0.5%, half a percent. Compare that to 31% of transgender people. That's one in three compared to one in 200. Trans people that say that being trans has had no effect on their quality of life are much more likely to attempt suicide. So clearly, there's something much bigger going on here that isn't just society being intolerant because the rate at which they're attempting suicide is not comparable to anything that we've seen in recent history. So given this, given that this population is much more likely to experience psychological stress than the average US citizen, why is it bigoted to say that they might not be best suited for combat? Our military is already under extreme stress. Our equipment's aging, costs are increasing, the number of eligible servicemen is decreasing. We just don't have the resources to accommodate the support that trans people need. These people need medical treatment, they need hormone therapy, surgeries, which then of course leads to recovery time. All of this is very expensive and the data don't show that after hormones and transition therapy, their symptoms decrease. So for the purpose of making them into more combat ready, treating them with hormones and plastic surgery frankly makes no sense at all. And you say, well, they could just have a desk job. Everyone can do their part. I mean, yeah, that's true. But the reality is that in order to get a desk job, you still have to be both trained and ready for combat deployment at any time. And the pace of these deployments is increasing. You don't have a ton of time when you get home to recover before training again and shipping out. That puts a lot of stress already on people that don't have these mental conditions. It is not sustainable to then subject trans people to this as well in the name of inclusion. It's actually cruel in a way and it isn't bigoted to want to keep people with mental disorders out of the armed forces. You know who else we keep out of the armed forces? People with arthritis, people who have had joint replacement, pregnant women, men taller than six foot eight. You know why? Because the military is a real deal. The entire country is quite literally depending on people serving in its military, being able to handle whatever tasks that they are met with, and there are some people who just are not suited to do that. To keep these people out of the military isn't an act of bigotry. It's an act of realization. It's an act of self-preservation. I don't want people that are already under the extreme mental weight of their psychiatric condition to be in charge of defending our country. I want them to focus on bettering themselves in whatever way they see fit that doesn't infringe upon the rights of others. To look at a group they're so distressed by everyday life that one in three of them are committing suicide independently of their quality of life as a result of being trans and then say, hey, grab an M4, we're clearing slums. Oh, and by the way, ISIS likes to hide out with civilians, so check your ROEs because if you make a bad call, you're going to have to fill out your DD-214 and maybe go to prison. Stack up. You really think that's a good idea? Oh, and another thing I wanted to build on for my intro, you guys stress so much that we must keep guns out of the hands of the mentally ill. So given that, 
It is then not logically inconsistent to say that we must keep mentally ill people out of jobs where their most important duty is arguably their ability to use a firearm. You're hypocrites. And if you think that white men are the only violent ones, therefore trans people would just use their rifles to uh, like tie a rainbow flag to and use their words to stop the enemy. I would refer you to the domestic abuse rates within the trans community because they are much higher than the average rates of non-trans, formerly known as normal, couples. One last thing before we wrap up. Uh, remember my caravan video, how I called it an invasion and, and stressed that it had to be stopped and stuff? If you haven't seen it, uh, you can find it on my channel, but here's some footage of my prediction and the prediction of many others that have IQs above 70 coming true at the border. <laughs> Also, I did an interview with my good friend John Saltzman over at Political Storm last week, so if you're interested in checking that out, I'll put a link to it in the description. So yeah, I, uh, I will see you later, I guess. Hey.